Unless you're a scientist or engineer, you've probably never heard of Henry Darcy. Even if you are, you probably only know him as the guy who discovered Darcy's Law, an equation that describes how fluids move through materials like rock or sand. If you're looking for oil, drilling for drinking water, or tracking groundwater contamination, Darcy's your man. He's sometimes called the father of hydrology. But here's the thing. You don't just become the father of hydrology overnight. He grew up in Dijon, a miserable town in the early 1800s. The source of its troubles? Bad water. They had a very meager and putrid water supply. There were often outbreaks of cholera, plague, typhoid. That's geologist Pat Bobeck. People got their water from scant rainfall collected on rooftops from muddy ditches, or from wells tainted by human waste. For four centuries, the city had tried all sorts of schemes to secure clean, abundant water, and each time failed. The family biography says that Darcy, when he was a young boy, had been sickened by the kind of water that he had to drink, and he decided and told his younger brother, evidently, that if he ever had a chance to do something about the water in Dijon, he would do it. Darcy was bright, but you'd have put his chances at just about zero. When he was 14, his father died, leaving him no way to pay for an education. But fate stepped in. His mother persuaded the city to pay his tuition for high school and college. He then went on to graduate from an elite school for civil engineers. Finally, he went to work for the Corps of Bridges and Roads. The city of Dijon requested that he be restationed in Dijon, so he came back in the late 1820s and at that time was asked by the mayor to work on this four-century-old problem that hadn't been solved yet. He got right to work on the problem. He scoured the town's archives. He tramped all across the countryside to evaluate discharge from natural springs. And then he announced a bold yet simple plan. Capture water from a spring 12 kilometers away and guide it to town with an underground aqueduct. From an engineering standpoint, the plan was rock solid. But people who actually lived near the springs or ran their mills from its water were bitterly opposed. There were numerous legal challenges. One went all the way to the King of France. People felt like they were going to lose their water source. But what Darcy did was he, he divided up the water so that the people in the towns where the spring was located were going to get twice as much water per person as, as people in Dijon. So he, he, he treated people generously so that they felt that, that they were being well treated. And then there was the aqueduct. To build it, the city had to appropriate land along the path. To avoid endless legal battles, Darcy set up town hall meetings and invited the landowners to name their own price for their land in front of their neighbors. By doing it all out in the open, everyone knew what everyone else was going to get. It fostered trust and openness. In the end, even the most vocal critics got behind the plan. It was very interesting and heartwarming to read that part of his story. In September 1840, townspeople gathered and cheered as the spring waters first gushed into the city's reservoir. Four years later, a vast system of underground pipes and 120 public fountains were complete. No one in the city had to walk more than 50 meters to get free, clean water. The result was that the, the town of Dijon suddenly, almost overnight ranked number two in Europe in terms of water quality and water quantity after only the city of Rome where the Romans had built four or five aqueducts. So Dijon very quickly went from being a place of where people were in bad health to, to, to a healthy place to live. He believed that everyone had a right to pure, clean, and free water. For solving the city's water problem, Darcy was entitled to a bonus worth more than a million and a half dollars in today's money. He refused it. It was his way of thanking the city for paying for his education. Today, scientists and engineers around the world remember Darcy for the famous law that bears his name. But during his life, he was the hometown hero who succeeded where countless others failed. And it wasn't just by having a great design. He was generous, diplomatic, and persistent. I think the Darcy story is important because it shows what a young engineer can do when they're given a big project at a very young age. And to have a recent graduate, a kid in his 20s, solve the problem is just, I think, an inspirational story for students. So that's why I like to talk about it to students. Mm -hmm.